I wanted to test what would happen to granite samples when exposed to the same temperature as a wood fire. I used a Scut automatic kiln, model KM1227, which operates at 11,000 watts. The kiln was not capable of reaching temperatures higher than 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit, so for later testing at coal fire temperatures, I needed to actually build a coal furnace with a forced air system. The coal furnace used a 210 mile per hour electric air blower to reach temperatures high enough to melt steel. During the kiln test, the system was programmed to increase temperature at a rate of 500 degrees Fahrenheit per hour until reaching 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of the granite samples that I used in the kiln experiment were obtained from a kitchen countertop company. They had been polished on one side. The coating that was used as a polish was vaporized away in the heat of the kiln, but I saw no other changes in the granite. The samples in the kiln did not melt, so I wanted to repeat the experiment using a real fire at 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. After baking in the wood fire, I retrieved the granite sample. The only physical changes that I noticed were that the black spots in the granite had turned to gold shiny flecks. These were probably iron pyrite. To reach the highest possible temperatures in the remaining fire experiments, I needed to build a forced air system with the help of a blacksmith apprentice. First we placed a layer of insulating ceramic bricks and we positioned a steel pipe in the bottom of the fire pit. The pipe had several holes to allow air to be forced into the base of the fire. The blacksmith needed to bend the pipe so that my air blower could be connected to the other end of the air pipe above ground level. Here you see the steel pipe sticking up above ground level, and we are attaching it to the air blower. If it is possible for a wood fire to reach temperatures greater than 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit, it would happen under these conditions, with an insulated ceramic fire pit and a forced air system. The granite sample is in the center of this picture. While it is heating in the forced air wood fire, you can see the edges of the granite begin to turn white, but the granite does not actually melt.
In the last of the fire experiments, I used coal with forced air. This created temperatures high enough to melt steel. It would be difficult to imagine that the ancient Scots could have made better fires, considering I used modern ceramic insulating bricks, anthracite coal, and a very strong electric air blower. In this picture, the blacksmith apprentice is showing us that when he placed a solid steel bar into our fire, some of the metal liquefied and it dripped off the end of the bar. He was able to forge the steel into a spear point. In his article, The Mystery of Vitrified Hillforts, Dr. Roland Comte said that all the attempts made so far at reproducing vitrification have failed. He said this is probably due to the fact that the temperature could redden the stones, but was never enough to vitrify them. Our blast furnace produced the same result. The granite glowed red, but it did not melt. We were not satisfied with this result, so we decided to try again. Red granite. Blue and orange. 